Hi everyone, welcome to our video on naming hydrocarbons. So what you'll need are notes, your pen and paper will do, uh, table P and table Q. So here we have a hydrocarbon. A hydrocarbon is just a large molecule that's made up of carbons and hydrogens. And we've seen these when we talked about the homologous series of alkanes, alkenes, alkynes. Go back to that video if you need some help. Um, this is branching off from there, so we need to make sure that we have we know how to name those basic alkanes, alkenes, alkynes before we move on to this one. So with this one, we can actually tell that it's, it looks a little different. We have the large carbons, or um, more carbons in this case than we had before, and they're actually branched a little differently. So we have this branch and this branch. So take a few seconds, pause me, go ahead and copy down this molecule. So when we name these, we'll actually end up starting with the largest continuous chain. And that just means that we want the most amount of carbons in the chain, and the carbons each have to touch one another, so we can't jump over the diagram to get to the carbon. So let me highlight here what we have. Um, we have this carbon and this one, here we go, and we can also go up. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in this chain. We wouldn't go the other direction, one, two, three, four, and five, because that only gives us five carbons. We want to make sure that we have six carbons. Okay? So we'll go back through one, two, three, four, five, and six. It's a continuous chain. We have bonds between the carbons, um, and we're not jumping over any spaces, but we're just continuing on from, um, in this case, over to the right and up. So we call this the backbone, or the parent chain. Name this exactly as you would any other old homologous series, the alkane, alkenes, alkynes. So you use, you'll use table P for the prefix, and then table Q for the suffix. So let's go through them. Table P is here, and we knew that we had six carbons in a chain. So we will find six in table P, and that has the prefix hex. Next, we'll use table Q for the suffix. We have to remember what type of bonds these are. We have to recognize what type of bonds these are. Are these going to be single, double, or triple bonds? And in this case, they're all single bonds, so they actually end in ane. So this parent chain will be called hexane. The prefix hex comes from table P, the suffix ane, comes from table Q, and we chose uh, AIN because these are all going to be single bonds. So this parent chain or backbone is called hexane. The next thing we do is find something called the alkyl group. The alkyl group is going to be pretty much a branch off of that main chain. So let's re-highlight the main chain and recognize where that branch is. So the only carbon that's not in this main chain is right over here. So that's what we call the alkyl group. We use table P to help us figure out the pre uh, prefixes. So we only have one carbon here, so the pre prefix should be meth. Okay. And everything will get erased for every slide that I go to. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so again, we'll have meth. And we use the suffix YL um, at the end of this to show that it is a branch off the main chain. So we'll call this meth. Okay. The METH comes from the number of carbons. The YL comes from um, the fact that it's off the main parent chain. So, um, so, so far we actually have the main parent chain, which is hexane, and then the branch in this case is going to be methyl because there's only one carbon listed there. So we have the name methylhexane. Notice there's no spaces between, it's all one big word. So when you see these words, they look daunting, but you can actually break them up when you, um, just using tables P and Q. So we know what the parent chain is called, we know what the branch is called. Now we need to figure out pretty much where that branch is or where that alkyl group is. So we need to number our carbons. We can number our carbons in two different directions, but only one of them is going to be right. So we have to start out with the closest one to the alkyl group. So just by looking at this image, 
This carbon right here is the closest one to the alkyl group or that branch. So I'm going to name this one carbon 1. This is carbon 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So the alkyl group is off of carbon 3. So we're going to name this 3 dash methyl hexane. Organic chemists know this, uh, can recognize this word and draw this picture uh, to help them or to, it's pretty much a common nomenclature because we know these basic rules. The three rules are the three steps. Find the longest chain, name that one. Step two is name any alkyl groups and step three is number the carbons and put that number carbon um, for where the alkyl group is in front of the name. So we'll do the second compound. Go ahead and draw this compound and pause the video. Okay, you'll notice that this one actually has, looks a little different. So in this case, we haven't shown each of the H's like we had before. Oops, excuse me, sorry. We hadn't drawn out each of the H's um, like this and then ruined that. Instead, we put the H's right next to them. Okay, that kind of helps clean up our diagram just a little bit. So, go back to step one. Find the longest continuous chain and highlight it. In this case, from here down will be the longest continuous chain. We use table P for the prefix, so we count up the number of carbons in this chain. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Whoops, sorry, somehow my highlighter moved. We'll go one, two, three, four, and then five, six down. So this one will still be hex as the prefix. And these are all single bonds, so they'll end in ane. So the name of the parent chain is hexane again. The next step is to find any alkyl groups, meaning any branches off the main chain. So here's our main chain. We have an alkyl group here and an alkyl group here. We'll name the alkyl group. There's two alkyl groups. Um, they're not attached to one another, they're two separate ones, and each one of them have only one carbon, so we'll still name them as methyl groups. Step three is we'll number the carbons, so we'll go through and here's the main carbon chain. We want to start closest to the alkyl groups. Luckily, in um, either direction we go, we'll be fine in this case. So I'll start from the left. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we'll name the alkyl groups from there. So we know that we have an alkyl group at three. We have another alkyl group at four. So I'm going to use three comma four dash. And I know I have two methyls, so I'm going to name them dimethyl for the parent for the alkyl groups, and then we'll name the parent chain, which is hexane. So we have three, four, dimethyl, two methyl groups, and then hexane is our parent chain. Go ahead and jot down example three. So we'll go ahead and do the steps yet again. The first step is finding the longest continuous chain. So we'll go up and then over here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons yet again. So we will name this as a prefix hex. They're all single bonds. So we'll look at table Q for that and that'll be ane. So it's hexane. Step two is finding the alkyl group. So here's our main chain and we'll find any groups off of there. So we have one, two, three groups off of there. Each one of these has only one carbon, so we'll name each of them methyls. So use, pause the video if you need to, use the example from before and name this compound. So here we have our hexane, the three alkyl groups, 
and we'll name or number the carbons, which one ever is closest to those alkyl groups. So we have carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We'll list out the entire name. So we have a methyl group at 2, another one at 3, so 2 comma 3, and another one at 4. So that shows that we have three methyl groups. The prefix for 3 is tri. So we have 2, 3, 4, trimethyl hexane. Go ahead and draw this one and go ahead and name it. So we'll go back, make sure we find our parent chain, the longest continuous chain. Go from here to here. We have five carbons this time. So we will call it pentane. These are all going to be single bonded to one another. So they are pentane. And this time they're a little different. So we need to make sure that we see what type of, or um, where those alkyl groups are. The alkyl groups are all going to be methyls again. And we'll number them. One, two, three, four, and five. Now, notice two, uh, that carbon number two actually has two methyl groups. Carbon three has the third methyl group. So since carbon two has two methyl groups, we'll actually write the number two twice. So it's two, two, three, trimethyl. And then we'll finish off the name with pentane. And the reason we wrote two twice is because there's two methyl groups at carbon number two. Alright, so a quick summary. Hydrocarbons are just made of carbons and hydrogens. Um, they can be small chains, large chains. We'll use tables P and Q to help us and just follow the basic rules. Number the largest continuous chain. Form the alkyl groups or name the alkyl groups and then just number the carbons of the main chain um, with the one closest, number one being the one closest to the alkyl group. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Have a great day.